doing a video here and we're going to be going through all of the bony landmarks of the ilium or iliac bone and we're going to quickly run through each one of these landmarks and how to prove it. Um, so I'm going to start by having my body turn on to his side and facing away from our camera here. So the first thing I'm going to be palpating is the entire iliac crest from ASIS all the way to PSIS. So feeling along the top of the bone, we're gonna go all the way to the front. So right here is the anterior superior iliac spine. And I'm gonna basically cut my hands all the way along until I feel uh, the posterior superior iliac spine. So from ASIS to PSIS this is the iliac crest. And I'm gonna ask my individual to do a little bit of a side crunch here, good. And that fires off an abdominal muscle um, that will prove that landmark. Can you lie on your back for me, please. Okay, so kind of echoing what we just went through, I'm going to follow the front of that iliac crest down to the ASIS, um, so we're just above his pant line right here, and I'm going to activate one of two muscles to prove that we're on the ASIS, so medially and going inferior is sartorius and laterally and going inferior is tensor fascia lata. They both have in common hip flexion, so I'm going to ask him just to lift his leg up on the, off the table here. And this is tensor fascia lata, and there's sartorius. From that ASIS and confirmation, I'm going to drop one finger and then a second finger. So I'm technically two finger pads down, and I'm in between sartorius and tensor fascia lata. I'm going to have him relax his leg so I can feel in between, and if I push a little bit deeper, there is a ropey band or tendon and I'm gonna ask for him to lock his knee for me. And as he locks his knee, that tendon becomes taut because that is rectus femoris. Rectus femoris' origin, one of them, is on the anterior inferior iliac spine, ASIS, A-I-I-S. If you go back to the ASIS, we're gonna go along that iliac crest here, and several fingers back, you should feel an enlarged bony landmark approximately around here, and that is known as the iliac tuberculum, or tubercle, iliac tubercle, and it's a bony object that kind of sticks out and helps with that attachment of your iliotibial band. In between the ASIS and the iliac tubercle, this is the origin of tensor fascia lata. So again, I'm gonna have him lift his leg up off the table. Good, he can also push out towards me in abduction, and both of those will help fire off TFL. Can you turn again over onto your side? <clears throat> As we're working our way back towards that posterior superior iliac spine, I'm actually going to have you continue to turn over onto your stomach. I'm going to switch sides here. So iliac crest, we'll follow it back. The posterior superior iliac spine is quite a large object. So in between my fingers, here's probably the top of it, and down there is around the bottom of it. So it spans several SP landmarks. This is one of the attachments for gluteus maximus on that posterior iliac crest. So I'm going to have him just lift his leg up off the table. Good, and that'll help determine a little bit of PSIS. We're going to follow PSIS inferiorly, straight down without going medial. I don't want to go on to the sacrum. I want to stay on the iliac bone. And as I go follow down, I'm going to sink right here into soft spot. So above that was very bony and hard, and the softer location where I sink. So the last part of bone is the posterior inferior iliac spine, or PIIS. PSIS, PIIS. And if I were to hook my fingers in between, this would be the joint line between the sacrum and ilium, or sacroiliac joint. Again, I can create a little bit of motion by lifting his leg into extension. At this point, you're not really going to feel a lot of the sacroiliac joint doing motion, but according to our notes right now, there is a little bit of rotational component that happens there. As we drop back down into that soft spot, this landmark is known as the greater sciatic notch, and we will revisit that later when we talk about the muscle known as piriformis that is exiting out through this sciatic notch. From this location, we're going to talk about the gluteal lines. One of the gluteal lines is running more on a vertical angle as it meets into that posterior iliac crest. So once I found that PSIS, I roll anteriorly 
You're not going to be able to feel this line. It's more of a separation line between two gluteal muscles, specifically glute max and glute medius. So this is the posterior gluteal line. From that same sciatic notch, running forward, heading towards that earlier discussed iliac tuberculum, we will have what's known as the anterior gluteal line. So between the posterior and anterior gluteal line in this section here is the origin of gluteus medius. I'm going to leave my hand there. I'm going to go back to that sciatic notch. And if I follow that from sciatic notch straight forward above the femur and land on the anterior superior iliac spine, this would be known as the inferior gluteal line. So in between those two hands is where glute minimus is going to originate. Lastly, if I can have you back on your back for me. As we save the best one for last, I'm going to fully passively flex up his leg at the AF joint. I'm gonna ask permission to roll your shirt up a little bit. We're gonna find the ASIS and that iliac crest. I'm gonna go about an inch in. I'm gonna curl my fingers in and back, and I'm trying to hook them into the iliac fossa, or only part of it I'm gonna be able to touch, but not really. I'm going to ask for him to bend his knee up towards his face so he's doing flexion at the AF joint, which would be the action of iliacus originating inside this location. There's a good chance you're feeling abdominal muscles, but that is how we're going to prove the iliac fossa.